Hey everyone, it's Angela from avpan.com and I thought it'd be fun to show you today how I use Photo Merge and Photoshop to create my panoramics. It's really simple and really easy, but it can be a little bit intimidating, especially if you've never done a panoramic before. You don't know how to stitch it all together and place your pieces um, and place your pieces together. So this is just a quick, easy tutorial to show you how to do just that. So the first thing you want to do is go to your Photoshop and file automate photo merge and so what I usually do is I leave all of these in the automatic settings so layout will be in auto and the blend images together is checked and what we're going to do first is browse our images and I've saved it to all of my images um, in this panoramic folder so it would be easy to pick out and we hit OK, and Photoshop is gonna do its thing, and it's that easy. It's crazy how easy it is. So while this is doing its thing, the first thing I wanted to talk about is while I'm shooting my panoramics. So sometimes when you come back to your computer, it's hard to see when you're taking wide angle shots and regular shots, and then you're shooting your panoramics, and it's kind of hard to see where you started your panoramic and where you end your panoramic. So my super technical suggestion is to take a picture of your hand in front of the lens right before you're about to start it and right when you end your panoramic, just so that there's a clear, definite um, thing that shows where your panoramics are starting or ending because it's it can get really frustrating when you go home and you can't even see where you started or ended. It just makes it super easy. I also really like the Canon 5D Mark II live preview. It makes it so easy to focus, but also to take pictures of panoramics. So what I like to do is I set up the grid system so that it divides up my scene into nine pieces. I take pictures along the horizon with one of the horizontal lines, and it makes it super easy to line up all of your pictures that way too. And also, if you plan on doing an HDR panoramic, what I would suggest is that, and if you're using Photomatix, um, do all of your processing Photomatix first, save them into a separate folder on your desktop or whatever called panoramic, and um, do this photo merge after you've done the Photomatix part. So once you do the photo merge, you do all the Photoshop parts. And so if you wanted to learn more about HDR, definitely be sure to check out my tutorials in the links below. So, so here is our, our stitching and it looks really, really good. You may see that right here, um, it looks a little bit faded or it looks like there's a little bit of a overlap or mistake there. So what we wanna do is when you zoom in, you, will, you don't even see it. I think it's just, I'm not sure why it does that, but when you zoom in, you won't even see it. But just in case you do see it, maybe you didn't line up your horizon line or, you know, there was some kind of mistake while you're shooting. What I would do is just take your healing brush and that's the uh, keyboard shortcut J. Oh, I'm sorry. First thing we got to do, if you're happy with your uh, photo merge, is to combine all of these layers over here. So what you do there is hit Command E. And that just merges all of them together. Now you go into the spot healing and you just would just brush in your seams and hopefully that works. Brush it out or stamp it out, whatever you can do to get rid of those seams. Um, if you took the pictures correctly, you shouldn't be able or you shouldn't see those kind of uh, seams anyways. Definitely be sure to take pictures of the horizon. So you can see when I zoom out that we have these waves in and out too. So that's probably because the horizon changed a little bit or when I was taking pictures, you know, it changed. So what I suggest doing is either crop out all of these, all of these waves out like so, or if you wanted some extra sky, we can crop this edge, crop this edge a little bit, and I'll show you how to duplicate the sky so that you have more of a sky, or water, or whatever you wanted to do. So I would choose your marquee tool, select a 
select a large area of your sky and then you want to go to fill and I think that is under images Fill. Or you can just hit Shift F5, which is what I like to do, and fill that with content aware. And what it's going to do is that it's going to read all the color and pattern and texture from down here and fill it in up there. Basically, just duplicating what's in the rectangle. Awesome! So all you do is just keep on continuing the rest, and if you have a little spot like this on the bottom, just do the same thing. Content aware, okay, and it's just going to fill it in. You can't even tell. So I hope you guys enjoy this easy tutorial. Really easy to make panoramics, so much fun too, and it looks great on the wall if you ever decide to print these out and display them. So thank you so much for those of you who suggested I make this panoramic tutorial, and here is my final result of the panoramic. And if you have any other video suggestions, please let me know. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please be sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. I received a fairly large delivery yesterday. And I'm so excited to 